Hey Suzy Q here at Q Aquatics and welcome to Freshwater Friday. A couple months ago I went to my Bucks County Aquarium Society auction and I did some interviews and two of the people I talked to really made a serious impact on the depth of my hobby. And I think I want to take it to the next level. So let's take a listen to what they have to say about three great causes in our fish hobby. And I'll talk more about it later. So here are two of the members of the Bucks County Aquarium Society. Would you like to introduce yourself? Gary Jones. And how long have you been around? Since the conception of the club. <laughs> oh, wow. What year was that? I couldn't remember back. 20-some, 25 years ago, so. Wow. And I'm Mark DeNero. And how long have you been? Been in the club since I moved to Pennsylvania, which was early 2000s. Wow. So what kind of benefits do you guys see as being a club member? Just hanging out with other club members. Sure. Sharing information. It's a lot of fun. A place to get fish. Seeing the excitement of others. Yep. So there's, I'm finding out that the fish keeping hobby is a lot deeper than, I've only been in the fish keeping hobby for one year. And it's a lot deeper than I know. You guys were talking about conservation. Well, the biggest problem we have today is, you know, people not understanding that collecting wild fish in a sustainable manner is not just beneficial for getting the fish or seeing new species, but it's beneficial for the community that's collecting them. Uh, if we don't help either islanders uh, in Indonesia or the Philippines, or we don't help uh, villagers and Amazon collect fish in a sustainable way, they'll still have to make money or find protein sources for their uh, children, for their families, and uh, if they're not making money, they need to make money in the Amazon, they'll move into mining or they'll move into deforestation. If we don't provide them uh, proper ways to collect fish in Indonesia and the Philippines, they'll use unsustainable ways to collect food fish, either through dynamite or cyanide or whatever method they have. They won't care about the environment. Uh, so education, providing a way to it, and providing a source of those uh, sales of ornamental fish, whether it's here in the U.S. or whether it's in Europe or England or wherever it may be, uh, is a very good way to help protect the environment, have people here respect the environment, and have people there also uh, find ways to feed their families. Fish keeping is much greater than just um, having a colorful fish. Right, and that's like my experience so far is walking into my local fish store and picking up fish, not thinking where they came from, how they were collected, how they were bred. I haven't even dove that deep into it. That's where everybody starts. But a lot of people who become serious hobbyists go way beyond that and learn about all this. And you have to give the the people living where these are animals are from an incentive to protect that environment. As Gary was saying, if you don't have an incentive to protect it so that you can protect your livelihood, your children's livelihood, a lot of times collectors are one, some of the highest paid people in the area. Oh. Yeah. So, you know, we're not talking about places where there's much income. So these, this can be a really lucrative thing to be involved in. And it's generally passed down from, you know, through, through the generations within a family. So it's a real incentive to protect that environment rather than just use whatever is there and take it and you know not worry about the future, which if you're living in a subsistence level is what you have to do. Wow. So are there programs where someone like me who's just starting off in the fish hobby could get into? Like to that would help? One of the greatest programs out there going in my mind to understand both sustainability, how you're helping the natural environment as well as the people indigenous to the area and how it affects everything is Project Piaba. Yep, and Project Piaba is an organization. Uh, it's uh, headed today by Scott Dowd at New England Aquarium, but it's much greater than that. It's, it's a worldwide activity. Uh, it is to benefit both the environment and show how bringing those wild fish in and selling them and going back and understanding the environment. So Project Piaba, if you look it up, you'll, you'll find it online. You'll learn an awful lot about not only the environment and the benefits of fish keeping. So that, that's where I would start. 
There's many awesome. programs out there. That's not the only one, but that that one is totally nonprofit. That one is totally about helping the environment, and uh, it's it's been around for quite a long time. Another one I think is worth mentioning. It's more on the saltwater side. It's Coral Reef Restoration Foundation, which is active down in Florida Keys. Coral Reef. Coral Reef Restoration, Restoration. Foundation. It's a foundation, right? Uh, I believe so. Yeah. yeah. And what do they do? They um, are putting. They're working with uh, coral reproduction down there and, re- and putting corals back onto the reef, trying to rebuild oh, wow. the, the reefs that have been damaged by human activities in the Florida Keys. Wow. One of the biggest problems with coral reefs today with the U.S. government is they don't allow structure to go down. And uh, if you look in Indonesia, you look at some areas for coral reef uh, restoration type work, uh, if you look up uh, Mars Sustainable or Mars Coral Reefs and you'll see some of the work there, there's simple ways to reestablish coral reefs that have been destroyed through dynamite or through destructive practices. And uh, it doesn't have to be expensive, but we do need the cooperation of government, private industry, hmm. to educate local people on how to do it. Um, and the U.S. government is not as cooperative, uh, either due to environmental groups thinking they're doing the right thing without the proper education sometimes. Wow. Um, so, yes, it's a it's great to see these organizations get stronger and stronger, and there's many out there that are coming along. So... That's interesting. Now, you were talking at the last couple of meetings ago for some local things to do. Uh, you were talking about I can do the name of it. CARES? Is that? Oh, CARES yeah, program. the CARES program, <laughs> which is um, originally was an ACA thing. We started within the confines of the ACA. It's de- dedicated to uh, reproducing endangered species. Uh, oh, in, so that's something a hobbyist would do. Right. Pure yep. line. Mm-hmm. Knowing the location and being able to track the lineage of the fish back into the wild so you know you're you're keeping a strain of fish alive that may be in danger in, in the wild and in some cases are even extinct in the wild. So now I know it's not a fish, but I, I keep axolotls. Mm-hmm. They're not alive in the wild anymore, are they? They or? actually are. Oh. But in one very polluted place in Mexico City. Oh, okay. Yeah. So they're endangered or they're in Definitely. danger of being endangered if not. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Because I do know a lot of hobbyists who breed axolotls. Mm-hmm. Their main purpose is it, not for profit. It's to keep axolotls going. Right. They're, they're neat little beasties. I love them. <laughs> <laughs> There's a bunch here in the auction today, too. True. All right, so how long have you been keeping fish? I got my first real aquarium, as in one with a filter, in 1970. Ooh. I had tanks before that, but never with a filter, never anything that sophisticated. Wow. Started keeping salt water in 76. Ooh. I can only imagine what some of your salt water tanks look like. Uh, very different than they look today. Ah. We used to try to grow algae. Algae was a good thing. Oh, really? Used to put stuff in to feed the algae to grow, grow hair out and stuff <laughs> back in, in the 70s. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> I, I can do that. <laughs> And how, how long have you been keeping fish? Uh, I have to say that I got my inspiration for keeping fish from my father. So he kept okay. fish before me. As the story goes, when he uh, went into the Korean War, he had over a thousand fish in an apartment with my mother. I went to my grandmother's basement. But uh, when I was born, I had a fish tank in front of me and have oh, okay. pretty much had one ever since. And then built aquariums and built filtration. And then went back to school for my graduate degrees in aquatics to learn more about what we're doing and how we're okay. doing it and better ways to do it. So so I know you both have professional lives in the aquarium hobby, fish hobby, correct? Correct. Yep. That is cool. That's like a dream, dream, dream job for me. <laughs> yeah, you know, when you make a living at your hobby, it's not like going to work. Isn't that? It's, it's a, so true. So true. I think I have a book that you co-wrote with Rachel okay. O'Leary. Oh. And you had some talks here and several talks, but yep. <laughs> so is there any advice that you would give a new fish hobbyist? Get out and meet others. Yep. Uh, and I say that because there's aquarium societies all over the United States, the world today, and uh, you can learn and enjoy so much either by seeing, doing, uh, when you have a problem, it's so much better to be able to make a phone call for someone to come and see your fish and go over and see them. I know the internet's great. There's a lot of great information out there. There's a lot of misinformation out there. So <laughs> learn from others and uh, instead of repeating the mistakes, help them 
help you to learn so you don't have to do those mistakes. But get out to the Aquarium Society. Just get out and enjoy. And what about you, Mark? It's the same thing I was going to say. Seek out your local fish club. You know, there's an Aquarium Society almost everywhere. Um, find the one closest to you. If you're interested in a particular group of fish, find the national organization devoted to that type of fish. I noticed that there was an organization just for, like, killifish, just for, like, there's, catfish. Just yep. for, like, oh I mean, God. it's the, whatever you're interested in, there's probably a national organization for that group. Wow. Well, thank you guys for taking time out. I know you're real busy getting together the auction and doing all the work, so I really appreciate it. Sure. Thank you. So what did you guys think about those foundations and projects? Anything that you're interested in? I think I'm, my next breeding project is going to be a fish from the cares list. I just have to do a little more research. I thought they were amazing, though. Thanks, guys. See you later.